So Nintendo has finally announced their Nintendo Switch sales figures. They said Nintendo Switch is Nintendo's fastest selling console ever in the Americas, Europe, and Australia during the first two days of release. And today there was a report that an estimated 1.5 million Switches were sold during its first week worldwide. And Zelda Breath of the Wild is the best selling standalone launch title ever for a Nintendo platform beating Super Mario 64. Wow. So, Xbox and PlayStation, the war is over. Nintendo Switch has won the console oh, war. Oh, don't say that. It is over. Game over, man. Game over. Dude, too soon. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm the asshole on the show, and he just said that. Wow. It's respect. That wasn't respect. Respect. You they have lied, a... and then you spit out that line? <laughs> wow. They have a long way to go, man. <laughs> Most successful week, 1.5 million units. Yeah, with a half of uh, broken controllers that don't even sync it very well. Including yours. <laughs> it's like once every hour and a half, it, my <laughs> left Joy-Con desyncs. Yeah, so enjoy dying a lot. <laughs> it pauses. The game pauses oh, when it aw. does. Yeah, so That's convenient. Yeah. Yeah. And then sometimes I keep hitting the it's button. It's like a sleep timer a in times. case you were you know, getting bored of the game. It just reminds you, hey, you're still playing, right? <laughs> And there was, there was a report uh, today that said, from Super Data, said that Zelda Breath of the Wild had 89% attach rate to the Nintendo Switch. What's the real data, though? That was Super Data. That was Super Data. data. <laughs> super Data. 89% attach rate, which seems a little low. What, what did you buy? It seems low. For the other 11% who bought a Switch... What the fuck did you buy? They probably thought there was a pack in like Wii Sports. That's why they bought the stupid thing. Stupid thing? That you never played before? You got a point. That, that was rude of me to say that, but... He won't milk cows with me. I invite him every night to milk cows. He's going to beat you because the I'm thing keeps on anything. sinking. So The what? He's going to beat you because the thing keeps on sinking. So, I mean... Exactly, yeah. The left... <laughs> don't have the left Joy-Con. Um, so, Mo, what do you think of the success so far during the first week, and what does it mean for Nintendo? I, I hope they keep building on it. I hope they uh, they continue making progress. If if they gotta they gotta release more games, it's a. Uh, uh, I try they to. Well, once every quarter, you're gonna get a first party title, and you'll get three to four Nintendo titles every year, and that'll be. We have your Arms, Splatoon Two, Mario. So you'll have Mario, and then. Uh, and that's it. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll play Splatoon two. We'll actually, play. I actually think uh, Splatoon uh, looks interesting. I don't know much about it. Didn't play the first one, so amazing. I, and that the multiplayer, I actually really enjoyed, and I'm not m much of a person who actually plays the multiplayer. And the single player, even though it was a little short, yeah, but the campaign was actually creative of how you become a squid, use the paint to to get through. Um, so I. Was a big fan of Splatoon. I can't wait for the second one. We'll play it. We'll have Rich play it with our little small Joy Cons. Yeah. We'll play it up here. That to? sounds terrible with our little small Joy Cons. The, with our small uh, Joy Cons. You know, everybody's yeah, Joy Cons are small. <laughs> let's let's we're, we all have adequately sized Joy Cons. Nobody here is have a bigger Joy Con than the others. But you, I'm and King we can Kong, see bitch. how many balls. <laughs> we can see how many balls are in our Joy Cons. Two. Two. I thought you had three. No. Not a really good physician. <laughs> what? What is going on? What are we We went from Splatoon to balls. <laughs> Splatoon to balls. He went there. I just followed him. What, what it was a mini game on one two switch. So Rich, what do you think of the sales figures so far during the first week? No, it makes Nintendo sense. Switch? And that's what I was saying, is that that was the problem with the Wii and the Wii U especially, is you buy the system but you don't necessarily buy extra titles. Almost 90% of the customers that bought the system bought Zelda. That's a perfect example of Nintendo knows what they're doing with their IP, what their market is. The problem is, is that they're beholden to third-party vendors. They have people making accessories. They have people making other, other titles. And they have people that they have to compete against. And they're not, they're not competitive. This is the same problem that Sega had was... They thought that their stuff was powerful enough, and I'm not saying Nintendo's going to end up in the same same path, but it is a warning sign. I'm not saying it's a stop sign, but it's definitely a, a hard yield that says you might be going in the wrong way. And I'll go back to it. Going in the wrong way. 
That sounds kind of dirty. You're, if you're <laughs> stop, if you're only making with the Joy-Con, if you're <laughs> only making titles for a niche market, then you should be able to adequately gauge what they need. The amiibo situation with the the false shortages where North America is undershipped on purpose. The fact that you can't get a pro controller whether you want one or not right now. That means that they don't understand what their core base is. And then if you're trying to actually make a, a push and go out what, like Microsoft and Sony has, trying to get casual gamers, if you can't even go after your bread and butter customers, you're really going to screw up when you're going for the people who haven't bought the Kool-Aid, who aren't drinking it on a regular basis. Oh, I that's drink that Nintendo Kool-Aid. It's delicious. And that's fine. You're not wrong for doing that. The problem is, is that if they want as much growth as possible... They need to go for the wider audience. I bring up Pokemon Go, and I know that Nintendo only is a partial owner of the IP. They didn't develop the game. They didn't have anything to do with that. But that shows that their IP, their investments, their first-party titles reach to a wide market. But when people played that game and saw that it wasn't as robust as a regular game, didn't have any legendaries, didn't really have a, a continuing system of updated content that went from the number one download of all time almost to nothing. Who plays Pokemon Go now? And we're, what, nine months since launch, if that? Nobody talks about that. And that, literally, after all the adjustments, Nintendo made over, like, what, $12 billion just with their little share because of the good word of mouth that made people invest in their stock. Imagine what you could do if you actually catered to them like you do when you're making a, a Mario title. But you did that with Madden. If you did that with Skyrim... If you did that with everything else, Nintendo could rule the universe of gaming like they once did. I think they're falling behind. That's why guys like me judge them harshly is we grew up on that. We looked to them as the industry standard, and now they're a niche market where we all go, yeah, that's nice, but I'm a single guy that's approaching 40. I don't want to hang out at Disneyland by myself. It, it's creepy. Doesn't that's mean why I you can't enjoy it. You don't have to but be I... by yourself. I'm, I'll be here right by your side. And again... Two guys tethers. in their thirties hanging out at Disneyland, and we're we're heterosexual, or at least I am. I'm getting. I'm that, was, that was just that was just a joke. I'm getting married just, in a few months. It's just a joke. But the the fact that the jury still do out that, that's <laughs> on you. Um, I just shouldn't do that. I'm not a homophobe. But anyways, the the <laughs> cut this whole. Thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just what? digging the hole. What the hell did this go? My point though is that. They, they're they not addressing the concerns of the people. I am one of those guys that would probably drink the Kool-Aid if I felt I was offered a glass. And I'm, I feel like I'm not. So what would Nintendo have to do for you to purchase the Switch? What would you need to be sold on it? Do more than two to three core titles a year. Present a, a system that I don't feel looks like I should be a five-year-old because it's, you know, like the GameCube. It's got a handle on the back. Was anybody really going to carry that around? Like a, an extra piece of their, their... You didn't do I that. Did. No, you didn't. Even if you in college were taking that around for some LAN party or something like that in the dorm, you didn't carry it by the handle like it's little purse that or was briefcase. my college console, actually. Huh. But you, you carried it around like a I'm normal... Old. Or you put it, you put it in a, a some carrier, a box or whatever, and you carry it around. You didn't carry it around like his little, like a little purse. Nobody did. I don't know anybody who did. And the the games that they put on some of these systems, like the 3DS, they're usually for younger, younger players. They're not. You're not going to find. But they have Legend of Zelda. They have core titles as well. And it's for a younger audience. Now I'm not saying it doesn't appeal to people like us. You know, we're going to go see Power Rangers, but that's not for us. They didn't make the movie for us. That's nostalgia for us, but that is for the teenagers and below. Pink Ranger, I love you. What's her name? Amy Jo Johnson. Ooh, what's the character name? Kimberly. Didn't know the last name. He's not a real stalker. What? What? Did you just admit you're a stalker? Honestly. Well, I was asking. Of the Pink Ranger. That was my first crush. And we'll have a, a movie review. <laughs> Of the Power Rangers. <laughs> what a cut. What a cut. Yeah, what a, awesome. Wait a minute. Wait, who's the stalker? No, I'm saying he he's he's saying that he's he's down. But, he's but it sounds like you're the stalker, Rich. I, I'm freely saying that. 
<laughs> so how is Nintendo Switch for the younger audience? Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was incredible. And it's actually that's for difficult. all audiences. That's for all audiences. It's pretty difficult. It's, a, it's not it's not like harder a, than most Zelda games. So is Call of Duty and we not did we not all have the discussion about multiplayer is a bunch of eleven and twelve year olds on there saying how you bang their moms and that's why you don't play multiplayer on Call of Duty? I don't I mean, think that made the cut. And that that's in our lost episodes. Whatever. A lost you still episodes. you still get the point. They're the stylistic choices that they make aren't always for the adult audience, and they're so few and far between that they don't really feel like there's anything that is new. It's hard when you put out two Mario titles every five years at least, core titles. Every Zelda game every five to, years. Well, it's, it's hard for me to be convinced that that's something different than what I've played. I'm not getting a new experience. And the last time I really think that they went outside their norms is when they went from Metroid to Metroid Prime. Oof. I loved Prime. But then when they went from Prime to the Team Ninja version, blew up the IP. Hasn't recovered since. And that's what I'm saying is that they, they at Star Fox, my estimation... Too soon, man. They haven't Too had soon. A, no, since Star Fox 64, they haven't put out a good Star Fox game. My opinion. Doesn't mean it's true, but I think... Star Fox game, yes. Okay. Star Fox Adventures was a that's Zelda That's two of their core titles that they've completely mm. killed off in my mind. Mario has been kind of done, Galaxy. done for me since the, since Mario sixty four. You missed out. Galaxy, Galaxy Galaxy makes a good point, but it wasn't. Again, it was kind of more the same for me. Is how I viewed. it. I played the first one. I bought the second one. And didn't actually play it. So that's what I'm saying is that they're they're not treating their first party stuff with the reverence that they should, or the reverence that you're giving them credit for, and. Their third-party support is non-existent. That's why I'm saying it's not worth third, it to me. Third-party is non-existent, and, and I think that will continue with the Switch No, but that's well. that's my point. The NES was the system. They brought us out of the brink of gaming's collapse in the early 80s. They brought us back from the brink of extinction. Stop living in the past, man. Stop living in the past. Which is why you're a Nintendo fanboy, because you're living in the past. Zelda Breath of the Wild is... Zelda Breath of the Wild could be on any system right now. The only reason you have a Switch is because it's on the Switch. If Zelda, Mario, Metroid, Star Fox were not going to be on the Switch, if the Switch was just every other title that wasn't produced by Nintendo, would you own a Switch? I don't understand. Our... If Nintendo did not make Can't software... Can Halo be on any other console as well? It could, but it's not. Same thing with Zelda, it could, but it's not. It's so a... I'm, I'm asking, though, because they're not just... Everybody else is covering their third-party support. Nintendo is not. That's why I bring this up. I get where you're saying that it's a false equivalency, but Nintendo has been notorious, and it's not just this generation. It's not just the previous one or the one before that or the one before that. They've had this problem since the GameCube that they don't cater to their third-party vendors. So that's what I'm saying is if you didn't have first-party titles, would you have bought the Switch? But that's all the, the Switch is, is... Is for the first party. That's all okay, I play for. But you ask me why I don't buy it is because I do have more than one company that I support, and that completely and understand. I can't, I can't get those on the switch, or I can't get them yeah. in the form that I want on the switch, so I don't buy the switch. Yeah. Completely. Instead, I, I, I throw all of Nintendo away, as opposed to buying into Nintendo and and throwing out ninety five percent of software manufacturers. So taking everything into account, the success of Zelda, again, with the supposedly 89% attach rate, which that's the only game to purchase when you bought the Switch. Taking history into account and how important Nintendo needed Switch to be successful, of how big of a clusterfuck Wii U was, is Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild the most important launch game ever? Taking everything into account, the history of the Switch was not successful what might happen to Nintendo to get off this momentum is Breath of the Wild the most important launch game ever. Mo? I think it helped them. Because if, it, it, if they did bad on, on Zelda, I, I could see them heading the same way as Sega. No, I disagree. If the as Switch much, isn't successful? Yeah, I think that they, they have diversified enough and they have other streams of income because the Wii U, let's all agree, was a flop. <clears throat> That's an understatement. Didn't even come close to, to making them close down. We may have wanted them to. We may have thought that it would be in their best interest. But everything that they've said and everything in their financial disclosures basically says that we're wrong. It's, it's just how our hearts are broken that the Wii U was a clusterfuck. When it comes down to their financials, they don't need it. And like I said, if they needed to sign, sell off their IPs 
to to other uh, other developers, other or other Play systems. Zelda on the Xbox and PlayStation. They could easily do that, and they would be completely back. Uh, they they probably wouldn't just be back and healthy. They'd probably be the number one developer in the world. And let's be honest, they kind of are because they've tricked everybody into buying these systems that you don't really need. So I I think that they're healthy. I need my switch. I don't. I need it hard. We'll see in six months after Zelda's done and there's Mario, Mario Odyssey. You don't know this coming out in six months. You hope. Twenty eighteen will tell. Of what the future of the Switch will be. 2017, okay, they so have I'm, covered. I'm going to go back, though. You brought up the, the the purpose of the launch title. If we have to wait another year to see what the effect is, what does it matter what the launch title was? As long you're as you're, you're already saying that they were going to be able to survive until Mario Odyssey. Well, no, because if the Switch is a flop and no one buys it during the first year... Are they not going to make Mario Odyssey? Are they going to suddenly start coding it for PlayStation 4? Well, if the Switch isn't successful, they're going to be second-guessing. If the Wii U's a flop, the Switch is a flop. They're going to have to second-guess what's going to be next. If they didn't second-guess after the GameCube. If they didn't second-guess after the attachment raid on the Wii. If they didn't second-guess after the enormous flop of the Wii U, what makes you think that now they're suddenly going to go, <laughs> I have a bright idea, we're going about business the wrong way. I don't, I don't get your point. They haven't learned their lesson yet as far as what, hardware The Wii development. sold over 100 million units. It was one of the most successful video game consoles ever. It did, but okay. If you sell a car, you also need to sell gas. If you buy a car but you never drive it, who cares? You sold the car. Yes, the company's profitable. You made your money back. Good on you. If you're trying to innovate, if you're trying to make sure your car is out there on the interstates and actually achieve its intended purpose, which is transporting people and goods across these roads, but nobody ever drives the thing, who cares? They bought it, yes, but they'll never buy another one because they're not using it because it was a waste of their time. I used my Wii. There were some great games on it. There were. Did you use it anywhere near what you did your PlayStation 3 or your Xbox 360? Anywhere near? Well, again, it's for first party, and like one of the... Best first party uh, okay, games. Okay, so again, you you every time you have to put an asterisk on something, you basically say I'm judging it in a different way because I know it can't well, hold up luster. Well, Nintendo will never be my primary console. My primary console will always be Xbox or PlayStation. So, do you think that Nintendo's whole corporate plan when they build anything is that I want to be a strong number two, or are they trying to be number one? Because my point from a competitive marketing background is I want to be number one. You can't always do that, but Nintendo was number one. It was the industry leader for the better part of two decades, and they haven't been for the better part now of a decade and a half. No. The The reason why Nintendo's strategy is what it is is they cannot compete with Xbox or PlayStation with power. So they have to, if they're going to be they number one, to do that. they have to be number one, has to be an innovative system, and that's why we was number one, because it wasn't anything like the Xbox 360 or PlayStation 3. It was a different way to play. Same thing with the Switch. They're trying to be innovative. I can play Zelda Breath of the Wild, a triple A, and I might even say this now, I'm almost about halfway through, one of the greatest games ever made, I'll say it right now, Breath of the Wild, one of the greatest games ever made, I can play at home and I can take it on the go on my handheld which I cannot do on Xbox or PlayStation. Do you do that? Have you taken your Switch anywhere outside of this house to play? I might be taking it to Hawaii with Have me. Have you? I haven't had the opportunity. But you had do it. every day. You leave the house every day. You've had every opportunity to take it somewhere else. You can play it on your lunch break. You choose not to. You but the majority of people who bought the Switch the, will do toilet. it. On the toilet, you choose not to. But the majority to. of people who bought the Switch will be taking it on the go. Even though I'm on my no, TV. You, that's what it, they could do. They could. That doesn't mean that they have. You're speaking for people with no practical... <clears throat> any kind of numbers on I, I'm stuff. saying it right now. Majority of the people will be playing Switch at home and on the go. Okay. Um, I disagree. I'll say that. I disagree. Majority of the people will. Even though I won't. I'll be in the minority. But I do believe majority will. Um, but I think it's between the most important launch title ever. Halo and Breath of the Wild. Between those two, the most important launch games ever. Because if there was no Halo, there might ne not be an Xbox 360 or Xbox One. Halo is what created the Xbox brand, and then through that, they gave enough time to create other franchises. Um, is there any other important launch games 
that you can name between Halo and Breath of the Wild. There's Mario 64 as well. There's only two launch games. Yeah. Um, I think Mario 64 is one of the most innovative 3D games that launched the 3D gaming. But I think the 64 would have been fine. No, Pilot Wing 64 is launched. That, that's all they needed. I'm trying to think of one for, for PlayStation. You know, uh, I can't. One doesn't. One doesn't come to mind just yet. Um, I couldn't tell you. Like I can't think right now. Like just as I'm still, you're. I'm still so, stewing on, on what he said. So yeah. he's been going off for quite some time. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still like processing everything. <laughs> you're like <laughs> next week, Mo will have his comments about our little rich and nice discussion of Nintendo and what we feel. We'll give you a week. The process. <laughs> All that was said. The epiphany, right there. Again, I'm a Nintendo fanboy until the day I die. I'm with Nintendo. There's, there's nothing wrong. With it. I'm not I'm with Nintendo. You now. I'm just saying, if you want to look at it, let's use facts, not just opinion, not not just feelings. I feel Mass Effect is is an awesome game. It doesn't make it the best game. I feel that it's one of the best games, but it doesn't mean that my opinion is more valid than anybody else's. That's why I was saying. You feel like people will take it on the go, but that doesn't mean that they will. The fact that you, who are somebody who has $250 for the core system... 300 six, Okay. And then you have the other $60 for the game, possibly more for extra controllers and stuff. So you, you've spent at least 400 bucks with tax on the whole thing. You were still somebody who probably... People were playing it at the restaurant while eating. Were they playing Zelda? And were they over 10 years old? I don't know their age. <laughs> that is, but that is an important factor because... But what does it matter? It's a Switch. It doesn't matter how old you are. It's the majority of the people who buy a Switch might be younger, that crowd, who's going to take it out. So it doesn't matter what their age is. I said but the majority also, of Switch owners are taking it out. Okay, so you, you might you might have some on that, but we still don't have numbers some. on that. Yours is anecdotal evidence. There's no actual studies on how many people do this. So let us know in the comments below, we'll end there, of what you feel about the Nintendo Switch sales, the success, and what you think is the most important launch game ever.